Global shipping needs to decarbonize. And with the International Maritime Organization's regulations to get shipping to net zero by 2050, the momentum to use lower emission fuels has never been greater. I'm Dallas Campbell, science reporter and journalist. Vessels powered by liquefied natural gas like this are actually becoming more common around the globe. And with good reason. LNG produces fewer greenhouse gas emissions, as well as lower nitrogen oxide and sulfur oxide emissions compared to fuel oil. These ships can also use bio-LNG and in the future e-LNG to achieve even lower emissions, charting a path to net zero. But there is a catch. It has to be kept really, really cold, minus 162 degrees Celsius. And that raises all kinds of concerns about the practicalities of storing it and handling it safely. But here in Singapore, the world's largest bunkering port, demand for LNG has quadrupled between 2023 to 2024, suggesting these concerns are being resolved with more ship crews gaining experience. And that's reinforcing LNG as a safe, practical option to decarbonize. Eastern Pacific Shipping, EPS, is just one of those fleets helping to drive adoption. LNG has been in the industry for almost two decades. It has been transported by the LNG carriers. It has a very good safety record. We have similar safety systems on board our dual fuel vessels, so we don't see any concern about it. Our people are confident with it. LNG must be kept really cold in order for it to maintain its liquid form. So on board, the engineers are trained to maintain optimum fuel temperature and tank pressure, all of which can be remotely managed from the control room. If it starts to warm up, then it begins to evaporate. Now, ships actually manage this by capturing the boil-off gas in order to use it as fuel again. It's a really clever way to avoid energy wastage. For Chief Engineer Vladimir, the process of handling LNG safely has now become routine. He trained on EPS's very first LNG-powered ship. Since the first vessel delivered by the EPS in 2020, for me it was the future actually uh, from the beginning. Now I know how to deal with the all machinery. Everything is manageable. Going forward, I was promoted on the dual fuel vessel to the chief engineer position. And now I am technical superintendent in the office and uh, I am handling our fleet. Vladimir now helps engineers new to handling LNG, building up a pool of skilled crew to service EPS's expanding fleet. Every month for the next three years, we are going to have uh, one vessel each month delivered. And by three years, we will have about 100 dual fuel vessels added in the fleet. To support customers like EPS with LNG dual fuel fleets, Shell has developed the largest LNG network in the world with bunkering locations and vessels spread across the globe. This fuel availability is enabling EPS to adopt LNG across a range of vessels. Everything from container ships, tankers and bulk carriers to cruise ships and pure car and truck carriers like this one and with dual fuel modern engines, there's another benefit. They're able to run on multiple fuels. A dual fuel vessel offers uh, the charters or the owners the flexibility to use uh, options like LNG, VLSFO, MGO and biofuels. Uh, in addition, we can uh, get on board bio LNG and for future ELNG. Alternate fuel has been part of the main decarbonation journey for EPS. LNG forms the main pillar in it. In the last two years, we were able to achieve our emission targets well ahead of time. LNG is here today and it will help us lower the emissions and be more responsible environmentally.